Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is the uh, US Pilot and Ground Crew Set B in 148 scale from, uh, from Hasegawa. And uh, these are the figures that I used in uh, our recent Metropolitan Police A10 build. And I thought I would show you how I painted them. So, let's get on with it. Right, so let's have a look at this and see what we've got. Only one plastic bag, which is nice. I'm quite sure why we need a plastic bag at all, but still. Ah. Now, we're not going to use all of these, obviously, only a couple. Um, so, I've never actually built a Hasegawa kit before, so I'm kind of interested to see how this works out. See, that's nice, straight away. It's got a, like a plan of all of the... Um, all of the different frames and then this shows you how they fit together um, <laughs> it's uh, even got a painting guide which apparently you're supposed to use <laughs> lacquer based paint <laughs> brilliant I love that the best of it is they've spelt it right in the French but not in the English anyway never mind um, so yeah, apply. So basically, they're just saying use a wash. Uh, that's it. It's just use a wash. A paint overall with lacquer-based paint. Apply a darker enamel-based paint in recessed areas or on shadow areas. Wipe off excess paint with enamel thinner. So yeah, they're literally just using a wash. <laughs> oh well, come on. Um, right, let's uh, have a quick look at these. There's a bit of flashing actually on the frame, but there doesn't seem to be any on the model themselves. And that, I mean, there are some mould lines I can see, but they don't look terrible. Not as bad as some of the Tamiya ones, frankly. Um, but anyway, like I said, there's only a couple of these that we're going to use. So um, we'll, uh, we'll see how we get on with it. So let me um, sort out the ones I'm going to use and then we'll make a start on it because uh, oh there's one of them oh he's in one piece that's interesting oh actually <laughs> those are the two that I was actually planning on using and they're uh, they're both in one piece already <laughs> so that's that saves a lot of aggravation great um, there we go yeah I mean I, I've had to use these because I couldn't find any like actual police you know, pilot figures, but I figured these will do. It's um, it is what it is. So right, let's uh, let's have a look at these and then get on with it. Right, let's have a look at these. There's actually there's a bit yeah. There's um, you can see there there are mold lines. The mold lines are not terrible. I mean, well, like there they are. They're not very good. Um, they're actually not molded terrifically well. Uh, the biggest issue really is like here where his arm and, and the helmet meet it's basically just like a blob um, which is annoying but uh, and there's a bit of flashing there like under his arm I don't know if you can see that I say I can actually see light through it I don't know if you can if the camera will pick that up or not but right down there in the gap of his arm so I'll have to clean that out um, this one's not too bad. It's uh, actually a lot better. Uh, her arms are a lot more, you can see here her arms are a lot better defined and things like that. Uh, there is a nice ejector pin mark right in the middle of her back which is a nuisance but never mind. Oh and there's one in the back of her leg as well. Uh, a little bit of flashing on the boot. But, eh. It's not... Um, it's not terrible but uh, the nice thing is with these the, the the police uniforms they basically just wear like black coveralls so we can hopefully hide a multitude of sins <laughs> by just painting it black but uh, let me get these cleaned up and then we can put some primer on them and start painting them right so for clean up it's just a case of uh, just scraping off these 
mould lines with a knife and whatever whatever tool you need to use to get in there and get rid of it. Um, but the other thing you can do, which is something that's quite useful on, on things like this, and I have shown this before, but basically what you do, the, these are actually not too bad, but there's a trick where you just go in with the point of the knife and anywhere there's like an undercut or a seam, just take the tip of the knife and basically make that undercut more pronounced and it makes a huge difference to the level of detail that you can see and it's like especially on like straps and things like this so like here if you actually get in the corner there and just scrape very carefully along the side of the strap and it makes them much better defined and they're much easier to paint because you have a sharp delineation between the, the strap and whatever the strap's going over. Whereas at the moment you can see it all kind of blurs into one. So let me get these prepped and then um, you can see the difference it makes. But it is literally just like this. Just get the very point of the knife and just undercut anything like straps, seams in the uniform, anything like that. Just undercut them and uh, it makes a huge difference. I'll show you in a minute. Right, so I've finished uh, with this pilot. I've done both of them, but just to show you. Uh, this is another one that's in the box. They give you like a couple of each, which is, it's a bit of a con really, when they say, oh yeah, there's this many figures, but there's actually like two of each, but eh, it doesn't matter. Uh, actually works very well in this case, because it means I can show you a comparison. So what I've done, uh, I didn't actually need to do too much because it's actually not that bad. But basically what I've done is I've gone round his collar um, and obviously cleaned up all the mould lines. I've look, if you look at his hands, uh, I've, done, I've been round his fingers just to make those a little bit more defined. And again, as I say, round his collar just to uh, make that sort of bit more distinct separation between his collar and his neck. Uh, I've done the straps across his back uh, and I think most importantly um, his arm here. I mean I've, I've not gone mad with it but you can see what this one looks like. That's what it looked like before and this is what it looks like now. And uh, I think you'll agree while it's not perfect it's a lot better than it was. So um, and I've done similar with the other one just uh, like cleaned up round her arms, round her collar, things like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these ones and uh, put a coat of grey primer on it. It's uh, oh, uh, this stuff, the high coat grey primer. Um, so I'll give these a coat of grey primer and then we can uh, start putting some paint on them. Right, so I'm going to start with the, uh, the face and the hands and whatnot. I'm going to use this uh, Cadian Flesh Tone as a, as a base colour. So I'll get some of this in a wet palette and we'll put some on. Right, and as usual, I will try and do my best to keep this under the camera, but I make no promises. <laughs> so the trick with this is don't get carried away with it. Don't try and put it on too thick, because the trouble is, especially at this scale, you'll just fill up all the details with paint in a second. So just... Uh, go over it and then let it dry and then give it a bit more and let it dry and so on. Lots of uh, light thin coats is what we want. Rather than just trying to blob it all on in one go because that really won't work. And I also should point out, as I have before, figure painting is not my forte, so I will do what I can, but uh, it might not be a great finish, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> 
but the, the main reason I'm starting with his hands is it's always a good idea when you're painting to start from the uh, the lighter colours and then work towards the darker colours because the thing is with this if I go over the um, over the edges where I'm going to do the black afterwards I can cover the flesh tone with the black easily but I can't to cover black with with this flesh tone would be really difficult so it's better to start with the lighter colours and work towards the darker All right, let's keep going over his face and that again. So I'll keep doing this and build it up and then uh, I'll show what it looks like when I'm done. Right, there we go. He doesn't look too bad, does he? So we'll let that dry and then we'll move on to a, a lighter shade. Okay, so that's dried out. That's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some highlights and I've got this... Uh, Kislev flesh and I've watered it down quite heavily and uh, I'm going to use that to just do some highlights on his uh, like cheekbones, nose, that kind of thing. These might look a bit extreme to start with but there is method in my madness. I'll do the backs of his hands and his fingers as well. See as that dries, it actually uh, fades into the into the the darker colour quite well. But we'll go back and blend them back together again in a minute anyway. So there's that one. Right now, I'm going to use some of this Reichland flesh shade just to uh, create some shadows. I don't want to go mad with this, I just want to really get into the, the nooks and crannies sort of thing. Especially around like his eyes and his nose and his mouth, that kind of thing. Because you might think, well, you know, aren't you going to paint his eyes? And frankly, no, I'm not. Because um, what I've found is it's all a question of, of scale and perspective. Because if you're painting a figure that you want to look good from, uh, you know, an inch away, that's one thing. But there's also the question of, do you want to paint a figure that looks like a six foot tall man standing next to a full sized aircraft from 50 feet away? And if you look at photographs of things like that, you'll see that you can't even see people's eyes. All you see are shadows. So... There's really no need to paint the eyes, in my opinion. I mean, you know, obviously it's up to you. You do what you want. But uh, I always think that it's a bit much. I always find that that model that you know they just to me, and I say it's it's very subjective. It's like any art form; it's subjective. To me, it just looks a bit odd. But anyway, right there we go. That's that one. So I'll let this dry and then I'll go back and, and touch up the highlights. 
Right, so there he is. That's his, his skin pretty much done. Uh, I mean, you can go mad with these. I've seen people paint like 170 second scale figures and they look ridiculously good. But um, like I said, it's a question of perspective, really. It's, it's what you want to achieve. And I want this to look like a six foot tall guy from 50 feet away. Um, so I don't actually want too much detail on here. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on and start doing, I'm going to do his helmet next, I think, and then we'll start on the, uh, on the uniform. So let's do that. I think I'm going to do the helmet white. Okay, so for his helmet, I'm using this uh, white scar. And of course, this is going to be one of these things that's probably going to take quite a few coats to get it to cover, but... We'll do what we can. This is always the problem with painting anything white. Is um, it takes many many <laughs> coats to to get it to cover properly, but it's all right. Right, I'll give this a few more coats and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Uh, right, I'll make a start on his uniform now. I'm going to use this um, Citadel, uh, is it Abaddon? 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 Whatever, black. So this is next. One of the nice things about these Met Police, or that, well, the, the police air service crew and whatnot, is they all wear black <laughs> so makes this bit a little bit easier because you can start with the black base and just kind of work from there although having said that painting um, highlighting and shading black is actually quite tricky but we'll do what we can So what I'm going to do now is basically just give him a couple of coats of this black base just to give us a, a starting point. So I'll get this done and then uh, we'll come back and look at uh, what's going to happen next. Oh, right, I've just uh, been doing some details on him. I've done his hair. Uh, did his watch um, just a few bits like that and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give him a very very light dry brush with this uh, sky grey just to uh, make him slightly less well <laughs> monochromatic shall we say but very very light that's next all right now the trick is when you're doing this kind of thing is just to go very very light because you can always put more on but it's not quite so easy to take it off again. So, oh, let's try and get him somewhere under the camera. So, so I'm not going to go mad with it, just pick up a few of the highlights just to kind of make him slightly less sort of black all over. more than enough and I think what we'll do now is uh, give him a coat of matte varnish and I think he'll be done and here is our finished article um, yeah I'm very pleased with how these two came out uh, we've got the pilot and his crew chief I did think about doing some other ones and I, I may well do that I might do a little diorama for this and, and add some more 
figures but um, I just wanted something to basically add a, add a little bit of a human element to the thing as I as I mentioned in a previous video um, I always it's something that someone said to me a long time ago that if you put figures on a on a diorama or something it, it makes it look uh, a lot more kind of alive if, if that makes sense and I think that's actually true uh, I think adding figures to a diorama certainly adds a whole new element to it and it certainly has uh, jazzed this one up a bit so uh, yeah hopefully this has been of uh, interest to you and uh, if you fancy uh, supporting me on Patreon that would be <laughs> greatly appreciated uh, or if nothing else come along to the um, the staff canteen page on uh, Facebook and Join us there and, and share your own builds and have a chat with like-minded lunatics. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.